In this video, we'll discuss the pleura of the lungs. The pleura is a double-layered membrane that covers the lungs. The outer layers is known as the parietal pleura, and the inner layer is known as the visceral pleura. Each lung has its own pleura. The pleura is classified as a serous membrane. A serous membrane is defined as a two-layered membrane, which is composed of mesothelial cells. A serous membrane is simply like a sac with no opening. It's wrapped around the organs and is completely airtight. The sketch in front of you is drawn to reveal the two layers of the pleura. The lobes have been separated and have been drawn in different colors. The thin double-layered structure around the outer boundary and around the lobes is the pleura. Notice it does not have any opening and is not only wrapped around the lungs, but parts of it invaginate within the lungs to separate the lobes. The space between the two layers has been exaggerated for teaching purposes. In fact, the layers are so thin and the distance between them is so small that the two layers cannot be seen separately on normal x-rays and CT scans. The space between the pleural layers is known as the pleural cavity or pleural space. The pleura, just like all serous membranes, is smooth, shiny, and transparent. The pleural cavity contains a small amount of fluid, which is derived from the serum. This serous fluid in the pleural cavity is more commonly known as the pleural fluid. The mesothelial cells of the pleura are embedded on a matrix of collagen, elastic fibers, blood vessels, and lymphatics. Serous membranes, including the pleura, have at least two different functions. Firstly, they hold the organs in their position. And secondly, they allow some movement of these organs without creating friction. For example, Lungs move continuously during the process of inspiration and expiration, and the adjacent surfaces of the parietal and visceral pleurae slide smoothly against each other. A small amount of the pleural fluid in the pleural cavity act as a lubricant. Visceral pleura is attached to the lung parenchyma, and the parietal pleura is attached to various parts of the thoracic cavity. The parietal pleura has costal, mediastinal, and diaphragmatic parts. The superior part of the parietal pleura which covers the apex, is known as a cupula. The visceral pleura does not only cover the lung, but also dips into the lungs to make fissures. Fissures separate the lobes of the lungs, and each fissure is made up of a folded double layer of the visceral pleura. There are two fissures in the right lung separating three lobes, and there's one fissure in the left lung separating two lobes. Pleural recesses are parts of the pleura, where the pleura does not completely surround the lungs, especially during the expiration. This is where the opposing surfaces of the parietal pleura come in contact with each other. This is in contrast to the fissures, where only the visceral pleura comes in contact with each other. However, the term recess is sometimes also used for fissures created by the visceral pleura, which is controversial. The term pleural recess is mainly related to areas where the parietal pleura makes sharp turns, and comes in contact with each other. Pleural recesses play an important role during deep inhalation. For lungs to increase in volume during deep inhalation, pleural recesses act as reserved spaces. Some of these recesses are costodiaphragmatic recess, also called costophrenic recesses, which is located between the costal pleura and the diaphragmatic pleura, and can be best understood using a coronal cross-section as shown in the sketch. Costomediastinal recess is located between the costal pleura and the mediastinal pleura, behind the sternum. The lingula of the left lung can expand into this space during exercise. Retroesophageal recess is located between the esophagus and the thoracic vertebrae. Let's use CT scan images to have an idea of how thin the fissures are, and the pleura in general is not bigger than a fissure. This is a CT scan of the chest. Sagittal reconstruction, which is similar to a side view or a lateral projection of the chest x-ray, but in a cross-section, and hence it can reveal far more information than a plain chest x-ray. Although it may be very difficult to see, but this very faint opaque line is an oblique fissure, and this somewhat straight opaque line is a horizontal fissure, which makes it a right lung. If we scroll towards the left lung, we will only see the oblique fissure.
This is a supine chest x-ray showing air within the left costodiaphragmatic recess, suggestive of a pneumothorax. This is commonly known as a deep sulcus sign in radiology.